Welcome, people and block roomians, to a tutorial, which I already did, but now I'm going to redo because the old one was undone. It, well, I'm not going to say it wasn't right, because it did what it said on the tin. It made you eyeless land, it, I just didn't, in my opinion, explain it enough. And I kind of didn't show you exactly from the start to the end how exactly you do it. I kind of just said, ah, do this, do this, and you'll be fine. Which is all good. But unless you actually generally want to know how to do it in a flight situation, it wasn't the best thing. I will be honest. So, my apologies for that. I'm going to redo it today. Uh, that video probably is taken down by now. If not, then be sure to remind me, and I will. Because that, I don't want people to go watching that and then realise, hold on, this isn't actually the right thing. And then realise, oh wait, no, there's one here. So, like normal before, for those of you who didn't watch it, don't worry, I'm going to go over it. Uh, we just want to set up like I said before. So you're going to need a frequency and a course. Uh, bear in mind, I'm doing this before I get to the runway. I'm going to Liverpool, for those of you who want to know. Liverpool to Cardiff. It's a nice little flight to be able to start off. A few minutes long. I'm in the default 737, which is worth noting. You know, it's, it's pretty much the same with every aircraft. Just bear that in mind, though. You know, don't go saying, oh, this doesn't work because I don't have payware. Well, neither do I. Look at it. It's a solid standard one. There we go. Right. Anyway, so how do we do it? Well, you are going to want to look on the map. Now, last time, Framps didn't record the map, and it's not going to record it this time either. Let me just recenter the camera there. So, the best information I can give you will be on screen pictures. If they are, they will be at here. So hopefully I've shown you the maps and how to get the uh, heading and course through a series of pictures because France isn't friends with FSX, uh, they both use CPU so they're practically taken away from each other etc, it, it was difficult teething problems there. Anyway, so what you want to do with them pieces of data we now have, so we now have a heading and a frequency. Now you might see heading and go, oh pluggy pluggy, no, don't pluggy pluggy in there. That's bad. You don't want to do that. As you see, I've already laid mine out as a test example. So, in course, you're going to want to put the heading. That's probably going to be one of the most confusing things you're ever going to have to get over. Yes, the course goes in the heading. The heading doesn't go in the heading as much as you want it to, as much as it makes sense. You don't. And I've got to hurry up because I'm coming up to the runway soon. Then you're going to want to press Shift 2. I mean, you could do this in any order. As long as they get done, that's what matters. Um, you're going to want to enter the frequency. So hold on, let me just screw that up a bit. Ah, blah, 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 blah. There we go. So you're going to want to change it. So you have one active and you have one standby. You're going to want it to change the standby. Remember, bear in mind this is nav one, not comms. They're for communication. This is for navigation, not nav two either. Nav two. I'm not too sure what nav two is for, but it's not for this. So in nav one. I recommend using the scroll up and scroll down key, um, not really much of a key, the thing in the middle of a mouse, that one. The thing nobody ever talks about, mouse three, that's it. You're going to want to scroll up and down using that to select your uh, frequency, which is 111.75 for us. Once you've entered it, so it might be 116.55, then you just enter 116.55, whatever. So, anyway, let's pop that back. There we go. And then you're going to want to switch it over into na active. I was about to say nav then, but no. You want to hit the nav 1 button. Like that. So it's inactive. So the one that was there before inactive is now in standby, and standby has moved to active. You're then going to want to hit this one down here. Just make sure that's nice and white. That basically means it's now going to beep at you whenever it picks it up. It's going to start playing a series of Morse codes. Now you might have seen on your information seat, uh, sheet a section that says Morse dot 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 line dot line dot 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 line dot line whatever. You don't really want to notice that, that's not really something you need to know, but if you're really picky and you want to make sure you've definitely got the right frequency, yeah you can just write that down and make sure, yep, yeah, beep, beep 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 lines are in this correct position, we're all fine. So, 
A few little, little things you might want to do, such as arm the spoilers. Ready? Uh, you might want to set the auto brake. Just ready. Ah, oh, to have mine on max, because why not? Manly reasons. Uh, you can have the flight director on. And, uh, well, you just kind of now... It's kind of a waiting game. Now you have to wait to pick up uh, the localizer. You pretty much have to kind of like pick up the frequency, pick up the runway, pick up the VOR station. Now, a lot of people... Um, look down here and they see DME. What does DME mean? DME is basically the distance. So if DME is 5.00, that means you are 5 nautical miles away from the VOR DME thing. Basically, it just means you're 5 miles away from whatever target you targeted. Well, 5 nautical miles because it's nautical because reasons. So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave it here and I'll rejoin you when we get some Morse. Just a quick update, we're literally uh, just a few nautical miles away from the airport, roughly around 25 nautical miles. I'm just going to slightly reduce my speed and my altitude for now, because there's one thing, ILS landing doesn't really um, change, and that's your speed and the you know, brakes and stuff. It can change your altitude once you let it. Um, it just doesn't change stuff like speed or whatever. You manually have to control speed, flaps, brakes, gear, spoiler arming, everything like that. Lights, you all have to control them yourself. However, it will focus on controlling the plane, which is the important part, I guess. Oh! Speak of the bugger, there he is. So, it'll start to beep like that. I'll tell you what, I'll leave it on once more for you, for your ears to annoy too. And then you're going to want to switch that to nav. And then you're also going to want to hit the Vorlock key. As soon as you switch it, you now Vorlock. The main reason why I had Vorlock on before is because if you switch it to GPS, it'll follow your waypoints. Yes, that's a handy tip. I did not know that before, mainly because I'm just dumb. And, um, well, I switched it to that, and that's how I found out. So, if you want it to follow the pink line, aka that, then you hit it on GPS, it'll do all the turns for you, and it'll sit on literally dead on the line very useful however once you switch it to nav once it picks up your morse code which i'll play to you one more time one more time so once it picks up that you once it switches into nav it'll now start to line up with the vor station it'll go hey i'm the vor station i'm over here okay right you are 23 point whatever miles away 23.7 actually, 23.7, no, 23.5 nautical miles away now, and basically it'll do that, basically what the course is doing is saying, right, yes it's that far, but it's in that direction, so then it kind of like starts to pick up different things, you can also tell once you picked it up, because you have this pink diamond here, that pink diamond, I'm pretty sure it's called the localizer, don't quote me on that, as I said, I'm telling you how to do it, I don't know the actual proper facty parts, which is why I'm not going to teach you that, because I don't want to teach you something that's wrong. So, I like to set my altitude to a good old 4,000 feet, maybe a little bit less, when coming in on an ILS approach, because they always can be a little bit crafty and catch you out with the pink diamond. Uh, I'll talk about what the crafty dropping pink diamond does. Uh, in a minute. Oh, no, we've established it now. Okay, so as soon as you start to get this pink diamond, I would highly recommend that you hit the approach hold key already. Uh, basically, what the approach hold key is going to do, excuse me, let me bring out a bit of flaps, uh, is it's basically this little falling diamond represents your height uh, compared to the eyeless feather. When you're in the middle, that's the middle of the eyeless feather. That down there is where you're too high for the eyeless feather, this is where you're too low. If you're too low, it'll leave your altitude hold on. If you're too high, it'll turn it off and attempt to bring you down. If you just write, it'll bring you down nicely. Now, bear in mind, ILS isn't the most stable thing in the world. I wouldn't recommend using it in heavy conditions, you know, like crosswinds or whatever. One, two, three. There we go. So, uh, we're going to use some flaps, start to reduce our speed. It might get a little bit laggy, that's just because I'm using flaps and coming into a busy airport. Uh, i tell you what, I'm going to turn off traffic. But, uh, oh... Holy moly, lag is unreal today. Jesus Christ. i tell you what. Sod it, I'll turn the traffic off. Okay, so I've turned off my 300-something airliner planes, which I have installed. 
And uh, as you can see, right now, the pink diamond isn't dropping. You might be thinking, hold on, am I doing something wrong? No, you're not. You're doing fine. Hold in there. Uh, oh, look, it's started to drop now. Now we're starting to get towards the middle of the ILS feather. Uh, if you view the flight analytics after, it'll actually, to, on the bottom chart, you know, at the timeline of how high your plane was, if you ever use that feature, that is, you'll actually see the ILS feather, and you'll actually notice that it goes straight through the middle. Now, as you see, it'll start to drop. As soon as it gets near, slash hits that middle point, it'll disconnect the altitude holder and it'll bring itself in. Which is fairly useful. Uh, let's go 160. Let's uh, use a bit more flap. Normally landing speeds of a 737 is about 150. Shut up. Oh, holy moly, I'm bringing them all out. Hold on. I pressed the wrong key. Okay. Right, anyway, ignore that. Ignore that completely. So, now currently it's bringing ourselves in. Now note, it, as I said before, it won't do the things such as set flaps, set speed for you. It won't bring out the gear for you. It won't do any of that. Sod it, I'm going to put it all out. There we go. Uh, it won't do any of this for you, you've got to do it yourself. Landing lights, got to do it yourself. So, in a sense, all it's doing is bringing you down. So look, now it's towards the middle, disconnected the altitude hold. It should now start to bring us in. Sometimes it misjudges it a little bit and starts to bring you down faster, in which case then it has to try and pull up or maintain that altitude. Sometimes it just levels off a little bit too much. Just kind of have to let it do what it does. It doesn't constantly always work. Sometimes ILS likes to be a bit dodgy and kind of bring you in a little bit too high. Never situations when you're about a thousand foot off the ground, recommend you disconnect the autopilot and kind of slow it down, just level it down yourself. Okay, so there's our runway ahead of us. Let me just zoom in. There we go. We can see out nicely for those of you using 240p resolution. Wait, 240p users, there you go. Uh, that's the runway we are lining on. Uh, landing on, lining on, whatever. We're lining up to it, same thing. So, anyway, we are currently, as you see, it says below glide slope. When you're below the glide slope, you are lower than the middle of the ILS feather. When you're above the glide slope, you're above the middle of that ILS uh, feather. You kind of want to be in the middle of it. Uh, it doesn't matter if it says below glide slope or if you like a little bit above or a little bit below. That can all be done manual correction. That's fine. Uh, let's lower our speed to about 150 knots here. Um, I know I might be coming in, as I said, a little bit too slow. I might get these in the wrong complete order, but you know what? I'm trying. I'm showing you how to do the Alice landing. I'm not showing you how to do a perfect approach or a perfect landing. Okay, so here we are. We're coming in nicely using our um, bog standard default aircraft with bog standard default skin on, aka Boeing house colours, modern. So, as you see, 2,100 feet above the ground. Notice that will be sea level. Ignore it, it's just loaned in Manchester all of a sudden, which is down the road. Hold on. Okay, so now it's recovered. Um, basically, that's just your height from above ground. That's your height above sea level. Uh, the altimeter, which is there, 2992, that's basically the barometer pressure, and it depends on air pressure, that kind of stuff. I'm not, as I said, too keen on that kind of stuff. That's not really my strongest point, but heck, I'll tell you what it means in the slightest. So, um, it's the flight clock, by the way. If you press that, it can start timing. It can also do a few other things. And we're coming down nicely. Okay, quick before landing checklist. Auto brakes on and set. Well, no, they're not on, but auto brakes set. Speed brake is armed. We are coming in at a nice positive rate. Well, negative rate in a way, but whatever. That's just what I like to say. Adjusting speed. 145, that'll be our final speed, most likely. Lights on for landing. Good. Uh, sod it, we'll put them on as well. I like to say sod it, I don't know why. I don't know where I've heard it from as well. Oh yeah, it might have been James May. Sorry, James. Right, anyway. So, we are currently on our way in. You are going to have to disconnect the um, altitude hold and everything. Once you get like 100 feet away from the runway, you want to disconnect the whole autopilot and bring it in yourself. Otherwise, it'll smash down on the ground and it'll look ugly. Not only that, you'll have everybody's Chardonnay and a back all over them. You, you won't be happy and you won't get hired for whatever luxury airline you wanted to be hired for, which has a few grand extra on the paycheck. Regardless, this is flight simulator, so you don't have to worry about that. If it crashes, then you just try again. 
So, I like to, around this point, disconnect the auto throttle. Because you don't want to leave that on. If you leave that on, then it, as soon as you land, it's just going to keep plowing the throttle forwards, thinking that you still want to go at speed. You don't. So now you're just going to want to bring it in nicely, just nicely. And I like to do it about 200, 100 foot away from the runway. Press B, just check that's correct, which is the correct for the local barometer setting. And now, as you see, that's going to jump up from 360 in a minute, because we're coming up on the cliff to about 100, most likely. Okay, 240, whatever. So 200 feet, there we go. Disconnect the autopilot, let it just fly in. Idle the throttle when you're about 20 feet, I'd recommend. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Landing. Completed. First thrusters reversing. Breaking, 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 broke. There you go. Retract your, um... Spoiler him up things. And you have landed. Almost dead on the centre line. Sometimes winds do blow you sideways. Sometimes it can't get it exactly dead on. Uh, it depends whenever you act, uh, activated the auto land feature. Why is this jumping round at the very last minute? I've so yeah. That is how you auto land. Slash ILS land. Slash whatever you want to call it land. Uh, hopefully you did enjoy this video and you found it informative. If you did, be sure to let me know down below in the comment section or send me hate messages, whichever one you choose. Either one. Any hate messages most likely go in the bin now. Probably won't. I'll probably use towards constructive criticism. Why am I talking about this? Anyway, thank you for watching. And as I reset my course because OCD is kicking in right now. OCD, OCD, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So anyway, thank you for watching. Oh yeah, by the way, Z to automatically disconnect the auto uh, pilot. However, it doesn't automatically disconnect the auto throttle. Bear that in mind. So anyway, as I will end it here now, thank you for watching and cheerio.